thank you so much for joining today's webinar uh, we'll just take a few minutes we'll let everybody join and begin the session do let me know if you're able to hear me properly if there's any issues let us know in the chat box uh, i believe we can uh, begin the session now so again welcome everybody thank you so much for joining uh, i appreciate your time and presence over here over the course of this session we'll be dissecting current with gst litigation trends uh, the strategies and tools for success my name is molly shah and i'll be the host for today i'm part i've been with signet for the past three years and i work in the marketing department uh, i'll now introduce the speakers for today first of all we have mr vikram kataria uh, he's from hna he has he's a ca with uh, nearly 15 years of experience he is currently a senior partner at hna overseeing operations in tamil nadu he previously spent almost 5 years working with the big four firms vikram has extensive expertise in indirect taxes and audit working across various sectors including it automobile manufacturing and the list goes on uh, secondly we have mr ravi somani he is a partner at hna as well uh, looking after the pune region he provides gst customs and international trade advisory and compliance services to clients across various sectors and industries with over 10 years of experience in indirect taxation ravi has authored several books and articles on gst and related topics and uh, lastly we have mr hardik panchal hardik panchal is a uh, part of signet he's been working with signet for over 6 years as a manager in finance with expertise in both indirect taxation and direct taxation he has demonstrated a uh, history of working in the in, uh, it department in the it industry and has also worked as a functional analyst on the tax tech solution for signet uh, so i believe uh, we'll start the session now i'll hand it over to the hna team to take over from now uh, so we'll begin our deliberation uh, today's deliberation on the topic of uh, managing all india litigation under gst more specifically looking at uh, current uh, gst trends so basically uh, it's been 7 years since the time gst is uh, implemented and if somebody would have told me that this would be the complexity uh, in the litigation in gst i i would have not thought about it at least i i have not envisaged that this is how it would be like we all knew it will be complex it will not be easy but uh, the kind of litigation and the amount of litigation that is happening in indirect taxes most gst is unimaginable companies uh, having multi state gst registration uh, are facing the you know uh, the brunt of this so right from reconciliation related issues to number based issues to documentation based issues uh, one of the things that is being seen is that uh, the litigation is uh, getting generated from all the locations across india so if somebody is having let's say 10 registrations so there are 10 center points of litigation generation on top of it if some the department is also generating the litigation from both central taxes department as well as state taxes department so in a way it becomes 20 you know authorities on top of it the litigation is not just from the range officers it is from the investigation officers from the audit division from the range division from the dggi and all the various things so now you just multiply this which means if a company is having 10 gst registrations they are answerable to about 90 different uh, departments and officers and uh, what is problematic is managing this entire thing uh, the the kind of volume that is there so today's topic uh, what we thought is uh, let us dissect this a bit in more detail as to since uh, we we being uh, you know pan india organization uh, facing seeing the facets of litigation from different sides of the country 
what we thought is that uh, let us compile our experience and uh, dissect it in terms of what are the current uh, litigation trends that are happening in indirect taxes more specifically in gst uh, and to look at the measures that we can take now to see how this litigation can be reduced what's more important is is that the best practices that we have been doing all over uh, you know in our offices plus various inputs and insights what are relevant is what we will be sharing in today's uh, deliberation the way we have structured this entire session is that first we would talk on the specific current focus or issues relating to the demands because eventually the first point of litigation creation is you know the show cause notice or the demands that are coming so what are the current trends as far as notices are concerned then we look at uh, other uh, common litigation trends and then we would look at a lot of measures the government has taken in this 53rd gst council uh, meeting where we touch upon the important aspects relating to the litigation and then what are the alternate remedies that the businesses have followed by q and a so this is how we we have structured the entire session uh, along with me is uh, you know uh, uh, my partner ms vikram so vikram would be taking the first part of the discussion on the current focus on notices so over to you uh, vikram uh, thank you ravi if you can confirm if i am audible you are properly audible vikram yeah thank you ravi so as uh, ravi mentioned uh, we have multiple points of uh, litigations being generated so on top of that uh, the problem is where the government keep extending the due date for issuance of show cause notice so in this particular slide what we are going to deliberate and evaluate is what is that as a taxpayer i can consider as a matter of contention to challenge the very existence of the show cause notice because many a times what happens is that we tend to go with regard to the submission on the merit or the legal uh, standpoint as well as the factual aspects however it is also important for us to understand what are the other aspects which we can challenge with regard to the very existence of the show cause notice so as we all know the time limit for issuance of show cause notice under 73 uh, has been extended uh, why there are two notifications through which the time limit has been extended so surprisingly the question which time and again i keep asking the adjudicating authority wherever we appear is that when the taxpayers were made to file the annual return during the period of covid especially if i take the financial year 2018 19 due date was december 2020 and for 1920 it was march 21 so that was possibly the uh, the the very uh, period where the covid also was uh, uh, spread across the world so when the taxpayer was mandated to file the annual return though it was extended but finally this was the due date of filing the annual return how can there be a situation where the officers are given additional time to complete the adjudication so certainly this is something which we have to challenge you may have a thought process that all said and done the officer is not going to accept my this argument there is no harm in you still challenge challenging this particular ground because you never know there may be one as of now there are uh, multiple writ petitions which are being filed before various high courts currently kerala high court has actually ruled in favor of the department but you never know if there are a couple of rulings which are going to come in favor of the taxpayer so in such a situation it should not so happen that uh, like what we have got an amnesty scheme now which said that if you have paid the tax in the past as is where is this will not be entertained so maybe in terms of a litigation standpoint it is always better to challenge this position and continue your ground of argument at further stages also interestingly another key aspect which is uh, being noted uh, on a pan india level is that wherever the officers have missed the bus to issue the show cause notice under section 73 because even now we are getting department audit intimations adt01 for conduct of audit from the period 1718 onwards even till now this is being received by the taxpayers in such a situations any observation of the officer will be certainly issued under section 74 now the question is uh, our experience our uh, uh, thought process is also that 
99% of the cases where this fraud suppression has been invoked will not sustain, will be dropped because it is very difficult for the department to actually prove that such intention existed and generally they do not also have evidence to prove that. So this particular allegation will not sustain at a higher appellate forum. In such a scenario, there is a section 75 which has given a special provision that even if the notice was originally issued under 74, the proceedings would deem to continue under 73 even if the allegation of suppression or willful uh, uh, the intent to evade payment of taxes is not existing. So the matter gets remanded in case it's an appeal and the officer has a two year time limit to pass the order. So in this regard, there is a circular which was issued in uh, 2022, circular number 185, which actually clarified that in case the adjudication is converted from section 74 to 73, one important aspect to be noted is whether the original show cause notice itself was issued within the time frame of 2 years and 9 months which is under section 73. In case the notice was issued beyond that time limit then re-adjudication under 73 is not possible. If it is within that 2 year 9 month limit then re-adjudication would be possible. Now one interesting point here is that at times, we have also seen cases where authority has issued the notice under 74 within that two year, nine month period, but the adjudication is not completed within the overall time frame of three years. In such a case, because the circular is not clarifying this situation, the question which comes up is if an order has been passed, say, at the end of fourth year, though SCN was issued in two year and nine month period, whether re adjudication is possible. So, in our view, it is not possible. And this has also been taken strength from the argument that section 7510 says if the adjudication is not completed within the time limit of 73 subsection 10, which is that three year time limit, then the proceedings in this regard would be deemed to have been completed. So this is something also which we need to uh, bear in mind. One other common challenge which we are seeing in the current litigation is that say for one of the clients, the department has completed audit for three years. All the records have been given, all the data has been given, reconciliations have been given. Still, there are independent show cause notice which are being issued by the department, whether it's an auto-generated notice or a scrutiny notice generated by the department. In such cases also, one standard ground which we all suggest to our clients to make is that when a complete audit has happened, this amounts to duplication of proceedings and the very proceedings cannot be initiated from the beginning. So this is one contention which certainly can be raised. If you are a little conservative, the idea is you make this argument. In addition to this, you can also make your submission on facts and merits. One more, uh, I would say, strategy which could be adopted by the department is that to overcome the time limit, they may want to club multiple financial years. Say they may club financial year 1718 to 2223 as a combined period of, say, five years. For this five years, they may want to issue a single show cause notice under 73. So what we need to challenge is that the time limit of section 73 has to be considered for each financial year and this particular argument has also been accepted by Madras High Court and uh, they have held that in the case of uh, Titan uh, company that the time limit has to be uh, computed independently for each of the financial year though it, it is covered under a single show cause notice. The standard challenge what we are coming across is with regard to this automated notices uh, which are issued without validation of facts and the other type of automated notices are based on the return disclosures made by the taxpayer. So in both these situations, there is no validation which is being done by the tax authority. It is simply a system generated like an MIS report which they get. Those tables are as is captured in the show cause notice DRC1 and there is no specific argument or validation evidence which is being put forth by the tax officer. So in all such cases, it is very much possible to challenge the very uh, existence and the validity of the show cause notice. Because if I have to take an example, in the erstwhile Senvat, Senvat credit regime, there were a couple of cases before the tribunal where the uh, service tax department had issued a show cause notice simply denying credit on certain expenses without uh, giving a submission or an argument on which provision and on which basis the said credit is being denied. So in all such cases, the tribunals have actually ruled in favor of the taxpayer 
if i have to specifically mention there is a very good case of sbi capital markets and crompton griefs it's a very good case where the uh, the bench has actually made a strong point that if you make an allegation with regard to denial of credit at least you need to put forth the ground on which the said credit is being denied otherwise what is the opportunity or giving to a taxpayer to respond to your allegation because here there is no specific allegation against which the taxpayer can uh, make their submission and how do the adjudicating authority then decide the matter on merit so these are uh, very good cases which certainly you can rely when you are replying to such system generated notices another point here is when you make your written disclosures always ensure and try to see that your disclosures are made in a manner to minimize such system generated notices here i will just make one point clear the idea is not to suppress any information the idea is to look at what would it be the best possible way of disclosure to avoid such system generated notices the common problem again here is uh, the show cause notice has been issued without any legal basis so here you may see that they may just simply track your trial balance all your expenses are been considered to be liable under rcm so again here enough precedents are available even at supreme court level the point has been made very clear that if a show cause notice does not have the very uh, the uh, basis and the grounds on which the demand has been raised then such demand cannot sustain now here one interesting point is that very recently i think it was uh, rajasthan high court where one of the tax payers has challenged the show cause notice before the high court but the high court in that case has uh, rejected the writ petition on the ground that you please make your submission before the adjudicating authority let the matter be taken up by the adjudicating authority and the notice would be put to its logical conclusion so now this brings us to a question is whether we need to always wait for the matter to be com completed at the adjudication stage or we can challenge this at the scn stage itself in my humble view if a show cause notice is devoid of any facts merit and substance and it is merely issued based on assumptions and presumptions even that can be challenged one or two exceptions of such cases like this one recent case of i think rajasthan high court cannot become a precedent for us to decide whether we can challenge or not so i still feel we can challenge scns which are completely devoid of facts and merits another issue which we have uh, come across very frequently is that the notices have lot of factual inconsistencies and uh, variation in terms of the numbers which have been considered by the officer even if it is a system generated notice so whenever you look at any notice in addition to challenging the very notice you need to also ensure that the facts stated in the notice are in line with the actual records else the same has to be properly put forth before the officer because many a times it is not just the arguments what you place before the officer it is also the facts which you need to make it very clear before the officer to ensure that the matter does not prolong further in terms of litigation this is a challenge which many of our clients are facing where they have a concern that okay sir this jurisdiction officer is just just sent a letter or an email communication asking for certain records many a times it is possible that there is a sera audit which has happened and the sera audit has actually asked the department to provide various clarification with regard to a taxpayer now since the adjudicating authority has to respond to sera they are then following up with the taxpayer now the question is whether we need to oblige to their requirement and provide the clarification specifically cases where complete audit has happened you can make a communication that all records are available with the audit authority and the tax the adjudicating authority can collect those records from the audit authority because once you start giving them data it may open up window for them to actually start doing an audit in the guise of such communications so wherever possible politely you can always make your point that it is already been subjected to audit and the records are already available with the department this is a common problem with the uh, especially i would say the state officers where the show cause notice as well as the adjudication is done by the same authority now interestingly there is a legal maxim which is uh, nemo judex in causa sua means one cannot judge or one cannot become a judge in the case where he himself has made the allegation 
So, in all such show cause notices, you may certainly put forth this argument that adjudication cannot happen by the same authority and the entire notice has to be set aside on that ground alone. So, all these aspects uh, can be considered by you. These are in addition to the submission which you will be placing on merits and uh, wherever possible, try to see if the entire proceedings initiated through the show cause notice itself can be challenged. So, this is an overview of the various uh, points which I wanted to cover in this particular slide. Now, proceeding further, there are certain other trends which we need to uh, take into consideration because certainly this will help us in either minimizing or avoiding the litigation uh, at a later stage. Uh, Ravi, if you are there, can you uh, please throw some light on these aspects? So, uh, Vikram has covered various uh, trending things and uh, uh, how we can make proper legal submissions in the context of show cause notice. Now, what I would be doing is that other than show cause notice or the related aspect, uh, other current uh, trends that are, you know, <clears throat> that is what we are seeing. So one very important aspect is again the mode of uh, serving a document, be it a notice or an order. We need to understand that in GST, uh, what department or what the law has uh, provided is that the notice or the order has to be served on in the online portal. It has to be online. So sometimes it has been seen that uh, the, the, the notice or the order has come physically or it has come over email, but it is still not uploaded in the online portal. There are numerous judgments, uh, one in the case of uh, Sri Sham uh, Baba Edible Oil, wherein it is mentioned that if a pro particular procedure is given in the law to be complied, then that procedure has to be complied. And this is a substantive procedure. So if the notice is to be given online, it has to be online. One can actually challenge, challenge the very basis or the very legality of the notice which is not uploaded online. One. Second very important aspect is that so many times it is seen and these are the you know, live cases that has happened is that the notice is uploaded, uh, the email has come, the email has gone into junk, sometimes the email has not come and uh, the SSC comes to know only once the bank account recovery has, you know, in, has been initiated and the order is also passed. The question that comes is that how do we interpret the term service of notice? We all must have learned this aspect of service of notice in the context of physical service of notice under income tax. But we need to understand it says communication. The language uses the word communication and communication in general parlance has to be to and fro. That is a dual communication. A communication cannot be said to be an effective communication when it is only one way and there is no feedback or response from the other way. In fact, under the erstwhile laws, whenever a notice was given, there used to be an acknowledgement or a sign taken from the recipient that yes, it is received. Unfortunately, in the online era, that methodology they have not brought. And because of that, if a, a particular SSC misses a notice, then they are facing the consequence of, you know, the, the entire order getting time barred and no, no other mechanism. In such cases, high courts, considering various aspects, have largely given, uh, I would say, relief and more of a purposeful interpretation rather than strict, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, literal view in this aspect. So if, if, if in any particular case is there where you know, we missed filing the appeal within the due date, because that particular thing was never acknowledged from our side and it was just lying online, we can actually look at uh, taking the recourse of this particular uh, option. <clears throat> Next very important aspect is we need to understand that there is a time limit to issue order in GST under section 74. Now the question that comes is how do we really compute this time limit? Does the time limit has to be from the date of order or from the date of upload of order in the on the portal? It may be possible that the order which is issued is dated 
subsequently, but it is dated, back dated and kept and later uploaded on the online portal. So when the law has given that any notice or order has to be uploaded online on the common portal, the time limit has to be looked at from the perspective of the time when the document is actually uploaded on the common portal. Of course, this is one area of interpretation, I would say, but this is what is commonly seen that uh, the order is actually not issued within the time limit, but later backdated and given to the SSE, uh, which actually defeats the entire purpose of time limit that is there in the law. Next, very, very important aspect is the orders or the notices that we are receiving in the context of revenue neutral cases. When I say revenue neutral cases, cases where it doesn't make any difference, it doesn't lead to any uh, shortage of payment of tax or, you know, to the treasury. For example, input tax credit taken in CGST, SGST instead of IGST or input tax credit in IGST instead of CGST, SGST or uh, tax payment in the case of RCM transactions where you will anyway pay and take the credit or a scenario where uh, uh, SSE has, uh, instead of taking input tax credit, he has uh, put it as a credit note, especially in the case of credit note, it was seen because the negative amount was not accepting in the system. We have seen businesses have actually uh, taken input tax credit in the place of a credit note. So these are all disclosure errors, you know, disclosure issues, while it is all revenue neutral. So we have seen cases where businesses have actually reversed the amount, you know, running in lakhs, along with interest and penalties. In fact, in our opinion, these type of procedural aspects, which are merely procedural, not having any revenue impact and revenue neutral cases can be challenged. And uh, there are a lot of judgments in the excise service tax era, where it has been held as a principle or ratio that mere procedural non-compliance do not uh, lead to uh, uh, you know uh, do not lead to non-allowance of a substantial benefit which is given in the law so that is again very important aspect that can be looked at another very important uh, tool that the associates have is rectification of order in gst more specifically there are there are cases where orders are issued irrationally. Uh, we have we have clients where you know SSE, they got an order. The company's turnover is 300 crores, and the order itself is of 300 crores, and that's that's merely because a particular information was not matching or a particular document was not provided to the officer. He has simply calculated it at a percentage of 18 percent. The full thing he has issued an order. So. <laughs> At times, I remember talking about a notice or order of one crore, one and a half crore, two crores used to be a big amount. Unfortunately, in GST, we are talking about 100 crores and 200 crores type of orders are irrationally issued. I'm not saying this order is making any sense. These are all irrational orders. The point here is that SSC have a choice either to contest that order or to go for writ in that order or to first get that order itself rectified. So what we suggest generally to our clients is that writ and appellate are, are definitely the remedies which you have. But if you can explain to the officer, showcase the document, ask for one more chance, explain that this document was provided or resubmit the document. And if a pleading is done in a right manner, we have seen instances where there are errors apparent on record as the department has actually rectified the order as well. So always looking at writ may not be the right option when the when the issue can actually be solved uh, in, a, in a proper manner at the ground level as well. <clears throat> Next, very important aspect is challenging the wires of the order. Uh, this is more specific, specifically, I would say, in the state tax department, what is being seen is that uh, they issue the orders uh, with one line. Your submissions are not satisfactory or your submissions are uh, not acceptable to us. Sometimes they don't even give you hearing. If they give you hearing, the hearing is uh, just a formality. Uh, uh, many times it also so happens that the hearing date has come 
uh, the letter for hearing has come while well, the date is already passed for example your hearing is slated of 1st of july and the letter has come today what do i do and sometimes officer give you hearing at a very short notice you have to come for hearing on uh, tomorrow morning and there is another instance where in the uh, uh, as a principle of natural justice uh, assessee can actually ask for three hearings many times we see that you know businesses think if the department has asked me in the first attempt i should try to give everything to them i should try try to submit everything you know uh, in a proper manner in the first shot itself let me tell you uh, it is okay to ask for hearing if your documentation is still not proper if you are not confident about representing at that point of time if you think you still need some more study don't hesitate in asking for extension let, let me tell you asking for extension is our right and three extensions are allowed as per the law so don't hesitate in asking for extension where we see that uh, you know we are not fully prepared the point here is that uh, department many time is giving three hearings like 15 16 17 that cannot be called as three hearings and this is what also held by a couple of high courts the point is that when we say violation of principle of natural justice, if the no order does not consider the submissions given in the notice, if the order uh, is passed without looking into the various uh, evidences that were given, if the hearing is uh, not done properly or not done at all or not done in a proper manner, all these things can be challenged. Uh, directly forget about merits directly the uh, the wires of the order itself can be challenged and this is very important that these challenges are drafted in the appeal or the reply at the initial stages itself so that it helps if the matter goes in the subsequent uh, stage next very important aspect is the cases where orders are issued beyond the wires of SCM so there was one instance in case of one of our client where the the show cause notice uh, had leveled the charges against two different uh, items while the order which was issued has added two more elements into the uh, into the charge and uh, there was some aspect which was dropped but there was some other aspect which was added and the order was raised when we appealed in, in this particular matter before the authorities, we did not even gone into the merits of the case. We simply stated that how can an order be issued on a particular subject which was not there in the notice. So if there is an order issued, first we need to read the order carefully to see whether at all the order is emanating from the questions that were raised in the notice or is there any new thing that is coming out if there is something new coming out that particular thing can be dropped straight away on the basis of uh, you know factual aspect without going into the merits next very important point which many times businesses miss is taking the benefit of come tax uh, let us say let us say that there is a situation where you we have genuinely missed paying the taxes and now that we know that it is missed we would want to make this payment of tax and assume that the tax amount is one crore many times most of the times rather department when they issue the notice or the order they will always calculate the tax portion let us say the the total uh, taxable value is 5 crores they will calculate 5 crores into 18 percent let us say which comes to assume 1 crore so this 1 crore is x tax calculation which generally department calculate that way only so as a assessee our duty is to recalculate and say look i have not collected while i did not pay this tax to the department i have also not collected this tax from the customer so if i have not collected there cannot be a tax on something which are not collected hence the five crores is inclusive of tax come tax and let me tell you your demand of one crore can reduce by 16 percent which is 84 lakhs so 16 lakhs rupees can be a direct reduction in the liability by merely taking this one particular ground and this has been an acceptable ground it is there in the cgst rules so 
And another aspect when we look at this thing is to quantify the demand. Most of the times we have seen that the interest that the department calculates are incorrect. So whatever is the tax portion, interest portion or the penalty portion which department is levying, we need to step back and recalculate uh, basis which they have you know, computed this demands. E-way bill is one area I would say, you know, which has created a huge litigation in, in GST. Uh, uh, and all this litigation is on, on some procedural lapses. So uh, uh, that the part B is not generated or vehicle number is not correct or the vehicle has taken a bit of divergent or the address is there, but it is not full address is there. Let me tell you, most of the litigation in, that is generated based on e-way bill is coming in the favor of assessees. Department is asking for 200% penalty. Unfortunately, they are not releasing the vehicle unless you make this payment. So assessees have multiple options. One is to make the payment of this 200% penalty and the order that is received to challenge the order. Second option is instead of making the payment of full 200% penalty in cash, you can make a bank guarantee, which is also acceptable. Sometimes officers don't agree, but there is a provision clearly saying that instead of paying cash, you can give a bank guarantee. Department has to accept the bank guarantee of that particular amount. And uh, it is also seen that uh, many times the order of the e-way bill cases is issued by the officers who is not eligible to issue order of that much quantum. Many times the order is issued by the flying squad officer while the order should have been passed by at least the uh, you know, department officer to the rank of deputy commissioner. So one can challenge the basis or jurisdiction of that particular order itself. Having said that, businesses actually should take precautionary measures in training their supply chain team on e bill matters because we would always want to avoid this issue also in the first place. Another thing that is being seen more specifically in the refund matter is that department is deliberately delaying the uh, passing of orders. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm harsh, a bit harsh here, but this is what I have actually seen for multiple of my clients where the orders when it comes to passing the demand are raised quickly. But when it comes to uh, refund cases, the orders are being delayed. In one of our clients' case, where we filed appeal in January 2019, and the order was not passed till January 2024, and that was the time when we actually filed a writ petition in Bombay High Court. And within a span of three weeks, Bombay High Court gave direction to the department to pass the order in span of four weeks' time. And it was the instance where you know, officer was pushing me that I want to pass the order uh, uh, because there is a judgment from this high court, direction from the high court. And we could get the, you know, the refund of almost uh, two and a half CR, which was blocked uh, immediately. So wherever there is a delayed justice in case where you're claiming some benefit is getting delayed. Let me tell you, writ petition, writ petition only seeking direction can also be a fantastic tool. Uh, Especially refunds, it is also seen that uh, in case of exports or inverted rate structure, because of some procedural document not being there, FIRC not being properly mapped with the invoices or FIRC not in a proper manner or some date is missing, you know, they are denying the refund claims. Uh, but then uh, what is what is to be done is that whenever the refund uh, uh, claims are being made or the deficiency memo is issued, we should try to submit as much information that the officer is asking so that uh, so that so that such issues are avoided. And we see that because of some useless issue, if it is getting denied, one aspect which we can use is escalation. Many times we have used this technique where if the junior officer is not accepting things, we, we go to the senior or his senior. At times we got the cases resolved by meeting principal chief commissioner or chief commissioner or commissioner where we have seen that they have been much fair in the approach and have directed officers to grant a refund. Next very important aspect is possibility of tagging the matters with other rates that are going on. For example, let us say in case of uh, capex expansion, which the businesses are doing, currently there is confusion whether credit can be taken or not. Let us say for pre-engineered building, uh, the safari rate rates matter is currently pending before Supreme Court. So if you feel that you are doing a capex of, let us say, 10 crores and there is a credit of 
uh, about uh, you know 15 uh, one and a half to two crores which you are not sure whether you can take it or not so one option that you can do, do is you can claim the credit and not utilize it so that whenever the judgment comes you can you can again you know uh, use it or, or you can also tag your matter with those matters so that you are also now a party to the writ petition most likely in another six months or one year these matters should get listed and you may not miss out of that one and a half two crores instead of today taking a decision of not availing the credit at all in the first place so these are some of the other you know litigation trends or you know the way out possibilities that we can look at so uh, now uh, we would be looking at some of the important aspects uh, in the 53rd gst council meeting uh, more specifically pertaining to uh, litigation so vikram uh, over to you uh, thank you ravi uh, considering the available time so I'll just have an overview of uh, the key uh, recommendations of the council I think first and foremost, wherever uh, you have a pending litigation or it is an appeal, uh, when I'm saying pending litigation, it's an a, at a SCN stage, uh, specifically for 1920, or the matter is uh, pending before appellate authority, you can look at the uh, kind of an amnesty scheme given by the council under a new section which is going to be introduced, 128A, with regard to conditional waiver of interest and penalty. So one thing which we have to bear in mind is that the Benefit of waiver is available only if the entire tax in demand is being settled. So if you have 10 issues in your show cause notice or matter in appeal, unless you settle the tax demand against all 10 uh, of those demands, interest and penalty will not be waived. So an upper time limit of 31st March 2025 has been uh, provided by the council. So one needs to look at all the pending litigation matters across all the states. And in our experience, there have been certain cases, especially which are uh, related to certain allegations or demands where documentation is not available with the taxpayer, you can certainly consider uh, opting for this amnesty scheme. Uh, in the future, there is also the proposal by the council to have a uniform time limit for issuance of show cause notice. In my understanding, this particular provision where they are going to club 73 and 74 to a common section of 74A with a single time limit is actually to overcome the uh, revenue leakages which have happened because the officers have not issued 73 notice within the time limit of three years, two years and nine months specifically for SCN. So to avoid such revenue leakages, they want to give a standard and uniform time limit for issuance of notice whether it is for uh, genuine cases or cases which involves fraud allegations and all. So this is primarily for that. Unfortunately, what may happen is that for the taxpayers and for us, the period of issuance of notice and adjudication may further get extended even in case of genuine uh, matters. So somewhere it is more of an unfair treatment given to the taxpayer where both genuine taxpayers as well as taxpayers who have an intention to evade payment of tax are going to be kept in the same uh, platform. So this certainly may be contested uh, at a future date. Uh, monetary limits, uh, though there is already a section, section 120, which has provided for having monetary limits for the uh, department to prefer appeal. Unfortunately, uh, the situation is where the, the council has proposed a limit of 20 lakhs, 1 crore and 2 crore, which is a tribunal, high court and supreme court. It is lower as compared to the central excise regime itself, where it was 50 lakh, 1 crore, 2 crore. So somewhere uh, the uh, importance has not been given by the government to minimize uh, litigation, else this threshold certainly could have been little higher, if not at least at the same level. Now with regard to the time limit for filing appeal before the GSTAT, there were a lot of confusions and articles written by few of uh, the professionals and industry people that since the president of the principal branch has been appointed and uh, there was this removal of difficulty order then a circular uh, referring to these two, the, the communication or the view given uh, across various uh, forums was that the time limit to file the appeal before tribunal has already started considering the appointment of the uh, member of the president of the principal bench. Now this council has clarified that this date would be communicated, the date from which the uh, time limit would commence would be communicated by the council or the government through a proper notification. Interestingly here we also have to understand that there is a circular which has been issued that when whilst the appeal will be filed at a later date, 
the taxpayer to ensure that there are no recovery proceedings will have to make a payment of pre deposit and also do a communication to the department to that effect to avoid any recovery proceedings with regard to quantum of pre deposit this is another challenge which the industry is facing uh, initially the uh, existing pre deposit norms were 10% and 20% at commissioner appeals and gstat stage with a value threshold of 25 crore and 50 crore. now the council has recommended a revision where the pre deposit will be 10% and 10% at each of the appeal uh, stages with a value threshold of uh, 20 crore uh, at each stage so this is a welcome relief where the burden of making the monetary payment is uh, being reduced for a filing of appeal so this is uh, some of the direct uh, uh, points which can help you to look at your existing litigation uh, if you can ravi sum up the other key points for the audience uh, with regard to this 53rd council meeting yeah i'll quickly sum up uh, we have done a very detailed session on 53rd gst council it is available on our youtube channel in case you want to you know have a detailed understanding of that so uh, here i will only touch upon the you know other aspects one is in the context of this time limit to take credit under 164 there were instances where uh, businesses have not filed their returns of uh, you know financial year 17 18 18 19 19 20 or 2021 uh, within the time leading to you know non availment of credit because of the time limit so it's a welcome amendment where government has told that if you have not even not uh, filed the return but if let us say the return is filed by November 30th of uh, 2021, that would be considered as the upper time limit for taking the credit. So if there is any past lit litigation pertaining to this, then this is a very good uh, beneficial uh, amendment or a sort of amnesty which the government has given. And what they're also saying is that the same benefit would also be available in case of cancellation and revocation. So where the, when the business is, where the, you know, registration is cancelled, so whenever it is revoked, then within 30 days, you need to file. So uh, file the return to so and you will still be eligible to take the input tax credit. There was an amendment in the past where, you know, it was, uh, you know, uh, mentioned that uh, interest would not be uh, is not required to be paid if you have balance in electronic credit ledger. Now that has also been extended to electronic cash ledger. Uh, one important aspect to be noted is that how to read this amendment, whether this has to be read prospectively or retrospectively. <coughs> In our opinion, this has to be read retrospectively because this is given. There are a lot of judgments in the past. Uh, there was a judgment of J.K. Tyers, a larger bench tribunal in the past, wherein they stated that once a tax is paid, uh, input tax credit is nothing but a tax that has already been paid to the supplier and there cannot be interest on this. So even for the past, there is no requirement to pay uh, interest when the balance is already there in the electronic cash ledger. That is why I told we need to recheck the interest calculations many times. They are wrong in the demand of the orders. Next amendment is very, very important. This is uh, insertion of section 11A, wherein they have told that if SSC has not paid the tax because of the common trade practice on as is various basis, they would on a case to case basis, they would uh, regularize it. So this is extremely important because when we read the law, it is very clear that it is liable to tax. Still, now there is no recourse because it is actually liable to tax. In such cases, we can represent to the department that we missed it because it is an industry issue. Everyone in the industry was following this practice only. And that is why we missed. And if the amounts or demands are big, then as an industry association or as a taxpayer, uh, we can re represent and now department has a power to regularize. Uh, I think once section 11A comes, we should look at all our past issues or sticky issues, which were uh, industry based issues uh, to be representing before the department claiming the benefit. Next very important amendment is in the context of time limit to avail input tax credit where, uh, in case of reverse charge mechanism. This is what we have been always saying that in case of reverse charge mechanism, specifically when you uh, take the service from the unregistered person, the time limit to take the credit would start 
from the time you raise the self invoice on yourself so let us say if the if the reverse charge if the service is taken in financial year 1718 but you have paid the tax today now and the self invoice is generated now then even now you can take the credit for the vendor bill which was generated in financial year 1718 it is a very important interpretation good that the department has clarified next very important aspect is that uh, in cases of discounts if you give any gst credit note to the uh, customer there is a provision that there has to be an evidence for reversal of itc by the recipient now this is something i would say a bit tricky where government uh, where you need to get the evidence now each business would now have to start thinking as to how do they get the evidence from the customer that they have reversed the itc so some mechanism has to be there at a periodic basis because after 3 years or 5 years when litigation will come we may not have documentation let me tell you today most of the litigation businesses are paying taxes not because they are legally liable to pay because they don't have the document to justify the uh, you know claim so this is a you know clarification which is there and this is one area which i think many businesses are uh, you know not having that enough documentation in place so uh, vikram if you can yeah. quickly talk about alternative quickly, remedies quickly um, i think most of the aspects were covered in our earlier deliberation one important emphasis here is that uh, there is a provision of 161 which allows for rectification of errors so many a times we have uh, resolved uh, the order the dispute in the order by filing a rectification petition under section 161 because of various apparent errors so what is considered to be error apparent on the face of record in in our view it is a very wider connotation and not mere arithmetical errors so certainly you need to look at that particular phrase of error apparent on the face of the record and accordingly prefer a rectification Uh, rather than straight away jumping to conclusion of going to appeal or the writ petition but certain situation may certainly require you to go before the high court where we have appeared before the high court challenging the order and the entire proceedings has been set aside by the madras high court on the ground that the principles of natural justice have been violated solely on the ground that the reply filed has not been given due consideration by the tax authority so this is something uh, you can keep in uh, your mind whenever uh, deciding on the future course of action uh, now uh, uh, moli uh, we can hand over uh, uh, the session for the last leg with regard to uh, the uh, module by hardik yeah uh, so uh, thank you thank you ravi sir thank you vikram sir i guess uh, the whole thing that we discuss brings us to the question or maybe answers the question that why a litigation management solution is required uh we have highlighted enough uh, you know topics current topics and the future uh, prospects which the government wants to bring in with the 53rd gst council meeting which again highlights why why it is necessary to have a robust litigation system now and not to depend on the traditional uh, excel sheets that we are using uh over and about to that we the government already has the multiple source of data availability and interestingly all the multiple sources are interoperable for example in gst there are 59 plus field that we are reporting in one and two way in available uh, there are additional 85 and in invoice irp there are one that way in all government has total 200 plus data points which you know they can use it to issue a notice on it uh there are there are very you know uh, interesting notices that have been received to our clients in which the inward eva bill is compared to the purchase data and and the justification is asked for that over and about to that the notice journey is also a very long it is not that you get one notice and you reply to it and it gets over there are there are multiple notices that we received for the same issues for example it starts with a7010 goes to 1a in demand and then a show cause is issued and then it goes to you know appeals and other higher higher court which requires a robust tracking of the invoices and as it has been uh, the tool has been inbuilt into our gsp solution only so it is easier to get the reconciliation that we have to reply to the government easily for example there is a uh, 
reconciliation, two-way reconciliation, there is three-way, four-way, six-way reconciliation, which combines all the fields of GST, e-way bill and e-invoice, and then provides you the a final reconciliation that can be submitted to it. On this uh, litigation management, we have divided it into four phases, right? The phase zero is import of notice using the import file and tracking the notices. The phase one, uh, which is already live, is syncing the notices from the download folder that is on your local system. And then our intelligent document processing system, which is IDP, parses the notice and populates the relevant data. Phase two that we are marking and that we are aiming for is uh, from the notices it captures the issue. It also gives the relevant tags to the issue so that across the multiple GST location, you'll be able to identify which is... I think your screen is not visible. I'm not sure you've shared your screen. Is it not? Uh, Molly, can you confirm whether it is visible? Yeah, now yeah, it is. It? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, uh, as I was continuing, we have divided the notices into phases, right? The phase two that we are aiming for and which is in the next sprint is using AI to dissect the notices into different issues. That what are the issues that you're getting into a notice and then appropriately tagging those issues uh, like a hashtag on our Twitter or a Instagram, which, which you can use that tag to identify across the multiple location that where the similar tags of notices are received and what is the area of improvement which is required. And the phase three is obviously uh, taking the AI's AI help and the details that are available in the GSP to assist you in drafting a reply. This is the phase wise implementation that we're looking at. Uh, this is the dashboard. Uh, what I'll do is I'll quickly jump to the demo that we have of the tool, right? So demo starts with this is the static dashboard that we have for all the returns that you have. The flow starts with manage organization where you can enter the entities. You can simply create the entities. The entities can be created by using the GST and only and basis that every other thing would be populated. Then we go to, go to the litigation management model that we have. So these are the notices that, that that would appear when it is synced from the download folder that you have on your system. And, and then it would go to the IDP, which would parse the notice and prefill the data in this manner, right? It would give you the from tax period to tax period, the division, it would give you the reference number, uh, previous reference number in case it is DRC01, then the previous reference number of A7010 or DRC08 to be given. So that could be given. The notice date could be tracked, the notice due date to be tracked, the authority from which you are receiving the notices, for example, center or state, the designation of the same, then the jurisdiction from where we are re receiving the notices, the type of forms. And also interestingly, we are able to parse and bring it to you the tax disputed data, the interest charge amount and the penalty charge amount. If case there are uh, there are hearing dates which is mentioned in the notice, then the person hearing date and time and the venue of person hearing could also be highlighted if they are available in the notices. Then it goes to the content where the notice passed or the textual format of the content of the notice would be available that you can easily use as a copy paste for drafting your replies. The second tab that we have is issue tag which I was talking about. So this issues would be passed from the notice itself. And then you can give a suitable issue tag to it. This issue tag are you know searchable and they can be filtered in our main screen from where you'll be able to identify that yes, in Gujarat, Maharashtra, and in MP, I'm getting a similar type of notice. And hence I need to focus on these three areas in this three particular location. Here we have a notice reply tab. So if there are multiple locations and you need to have a standard notice reply. That standard notice reply can be populated here. Over and above to that, we have tagged the notice reply to issue tag. So for example, if, if a particular issue, for example, if, if an issue is between 2A versus 3B or 2B versus 3B, then there are a certain set of uh, three to four or five seven paragraphs which you need in every reply that you reply for a 2B versus 3B notice that can be auto-populated here and then it could help you to standardize your replies across the organizations or across the location of the GSTN that you have to reply. 
in the document tab you'll be able to get all the notices that are available plus the replies that you have filed and also once the reply is filed you can also upload the arn of the replied file and when the order is and when the particular notice is closed you can directly upload the order here and mark as closed and the notice will be closed so these are the contents that would be available here over and above you can edit the notice in case you want to add some few details or you want to edit the details which are passed by our idp system you can edit the notice here you can assign this notice to a specific user so that the accountability and responsibility can be maintained and also you can account to a specific consultant so that the consultant will be able to come on this platform view the notice and it would help you to uh, frame the replies as well so this is where the notices are stored over and about to that we have created an interactive dashboard for the litigation uh, management so this is how the dashboard would look like right first is the litigation calendar and here you will be able to see the due dates which are coming and you can you know accordingly plan the plan the week and the reply for that if if there is any personal hearing it would be also showcased here so that you know you know that you have to prepare all the physical submissions that you have to take it for the person hearing to the department and have it ready before the 17th year these are the critical events that are upcoming so that you can easily track it then we also have a category wise status so for example for assessment that is asm data and how many notices you have received and what are the statuses how many are replied how many are due date lapsed which i need to take it now and you know uh, do some remedial procedures then there is the highest amount details so which location i am getting the highest amount of notices that could be tracked here there is the issue wise tagging so it is not necessary that we reply to all the issues on the one notice we we ask for dates and we reply to the some part of the issues and in the second notice or in the second reply so this is where you will be able to know how many issues that you have replied how many are active and how many uh, response has been prepared so that can be easily shared with the department and this is the location wise that in every location that a business has how many location is receiving notices and what are their status so there is an interactive dashboard that uh, is there right so this is the whole litigation management tool that uh, that will help you to you know further enhance your efficiency and delegate the work effectively so that the due dates are not lapsed and you'll be able to reply it on time yes thank you so much uh, all of you now i'll just uh, go ahead with the q and a session uh, we have a, i hope you uh, all of you can hear me yeah yes ma'am okay i'll read out the questions and uh, please help us on uh, so the first question is is there any relief from penalty and interest when tax is uh, not collected in the bona fide belief okay so i believe uh, uh, some of the questions ravi had answered but this again i will uh, clarify and explain see uh, any short payment or non payment of tax whether it is a genuine miss or uh, intentionally being evaded by the tax payer the uh, escape route of interest is not available plus under 73 there is a minimum 10% penalty 74 has a higher uh, full 100% penalty the amnesty scheme uh, scheme given by the government for the first 3 years uh, certainly can be taken uh, as a recourse if your demand pertains to those 3 years and notice was issued under 73 and uh, there is another question which i had seen in the q and a with that uh, whether the relief of amnesty will be available when the demand has been paid at the stage of audit so certainly going by the intention of the government the amnesty scheme should be extended though the current wordings are uh, uh, of the press release is referring only to show cause notice issued under 73 so certainly a stage before that for these 3 years at least this benefit should be made available so i have answered the two questions only in this uh, single uh, question yes uh, you have already answered some of them uh, apart from that uh, the other question we have is what is the time limit for issuing asmt 12 by the department uh statutorily i am not sure ravi is there any time limit for asmt 
No, there is no time limit as such in the law for issuance. Okay. Any idea by when will the safari retreats judgment will come from Supreme Court? Every time I have told I have been wrong about the time. So this time I would want to avoid at least giving the timings. <laughs> okay. I think one of the uh, question was with regard to this uh, DRC3 payment, which is being done during audit. I think Ravi has uh, replied saying asking for rectification. Certainly that is the first option. Also, I think government is going to bring in a new functionality of appropriating the payments made through DRC03 against a particular order. So once that functionality is made uh, live, I think this will help uh, many of the taxpayers to resolve this problem of DRC3 payment just hanging in the air. So that uh, functionality we are also awaiting. Worst case scenario, uh, one uh, uh, I would say Jugad kind of a solution is you can try to file your appeal manually. See, there are also cases where departments are accepting appeals uh, manually, wherever there are technical challenges. Like even today, e-way bill matters, the appeals are being filed manually, at least here in uh, Tamil Nadu. So here also, since this is a genuine uh, hardship, the possibility of filing manual appeal also can be explored. Uh... Is GST to be reversed if we provide free of cost services? Section 17.5. Okay, sorry. Whether GST is to be reversed in case of free of see uh, free of cost services or goods? So services to me appears to be little generic, but again those uh, goods, if it is a case because the restriction is on uh, goods. So we have to evaluate whether it is fitting into the three categories of uh, free samples or it is given by way of gift or it is destroyed. So if it fits in one of these three, because these terms are not defined, we have to understand the facts of each transaction. Correct. See what happens free when we call free many times, what is the context of free is important. The free can be in the context of warranty. It can be context of, you know, the removal is in the context of trials, testing, samples, uh, promotional. For each of these elements, the tax treatment differs. For example, for promotions, it has been specified that the reversal is not required. There's a circular so, you know, stating that. So this is a bit generic question. I would say exact uh, detailing would be required to give an appropriate answer to this. Uh, one uh, more question is there, Modi. I just uh, take yeah. the uh, mic from you. Is uh, whether S when SCN is issued under 74, is there an option to convert under 73? So even if you look at section 75, right, even the adjudicating authority per se does not have power to convert it into a 73 notice. The provision says it's an appellate authority or the uh, tribunal or the court which can actually convert the 74 notice to a 73 notice. Sir. So you may have to go through the process of appeal to get it uh, converted. Okay. Uh, we'll take one last question because of the time crunch. Uh, in case of barter services between two parties which are not being involved, does the department have any basis to levy output tax on the same? See, the meaning of the term supply is very wide. And the definition of the term supply also covers barter. So if there is a barter transaction, there is a supply, there is also consideration between one another. And hence, in fact, uh, in the valuation rule, there is an example uh, uh, you know, for this particular thing. So uh, of course, uh, what happens is this question is a very, very wide or a general thing rather than a factual aspect of that situation. What is that barter happening? But when I look at section seven, whether barter is coming within the ambit of supply, answer is yes. Okay. Uh, we have a lot more questions, but I guess uh, it would be best if we respond to these questions over mail. We will be able to connect with the uh, people asking the questions one to one, and uh, that would be a great connect. Post the webinar itself. Our email IDs are there as a part yes. of the presentation. You can yes. give us, and we would be happy to you know respond to all your questions. So for all the attendees, if uh, you have any more questions or if you have not been able to answer any of the questions you've asked as of now, we'll be connecting with you post the webinar. We'll also be sharing the deck that has been uh, presented by the speakers. 
and you can always get back to us in case of any queries so thank you all of you thank you so much for joining thank you moli thank, thank you all you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.